Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the 25 Days of Linux. Uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, a nice little program. It's called uh, EXA. EXA. You know, it's a Linux thing. It's hard to pronounce. So, um, what is this program? Actually, somebody in the comments recommended that I take a look at this uh, quite a while ago when I made a like short little one minute video. I was trying to do one of those fucking YouTube shorts things uh, about a program called PTSH. And they recommended I take a look at this. Uh, what this is, is essentially sort of, um, if I come in here and let's take a look at the features, is kind of styling for your uh, command line. Like by default, uh, when you're on the command line, and let's say you run a command, let's say we do an ls-la, it sort of gives you just this blank list of files. And it's not really that annoying once you get used to it, but it, it could be sort of difficult to tell what files are what if you're not used to uh, looking at this. And even if you are used to looking at it, maybe it'd just be nice to have some colors here, you know, have something going on. Uh, I mean, I guess probably the best way to explain what it's doing is it's sort of doing what the fish shell does by default. And that is foreshadowing, by the way. But basically, it's it's adding colors based on file type. You know, you can see it's sort of anytime there's a video, it's going to turn it this teal color. Images are going to be a green. Musics are going to be a blue. Directories are going to have a color. I think the directories sort of just stay the same color. Archive scripts are going to have another thing. There's a color for cryptography stuff, PGP signatures, that kind of thing. But it can do a lot more. And uh, I guess to figure all that out, we need to uh, install it first. So if you're on uh, go to Arch Linux, real easy, sudo. Pac-Man, whoa, Pac-Man, dash S, install exa. And then once this is installed, uh, if we were to like try to run the same command ls dash l, nothing is actually going to change because the cool thing about the way that these apps work is they don't actually change the function of your system. You have to run things through it. Uh, so if we come back to the website here, you can see here using exa, uh, we basically have to give it some options. So let's say we run exa dash long. What this is going to do is going to list out our files, but it's going to color them. It's going to color all of the directories one color. The weird thing about exa though is it's sort of meant to be a replacement for like your ls command so if i run like exa it's on my documents folder uh, you can see it'll print out everything. I could uh, pipe through the long version. It'll print it as a list. Uh, where I think it's handy is if I were to go into, like let's say I go into my website directory and then into the images folder. Uh, what I could do is I could run exa-long and you can see here, this is where it's handy. It's gonna color the videos one color. It's gonna color the images one color. It's gonna color the folders one color, all that kind of thing. So that's gonna be pretty helpful. And of course you can kind of go crazy with aliases as well uh, you know if you go into your bash config or your zish config in my case uh, you know it's really easy to as you would with any other app let's create an alias maybe we'll alias lss to run uh, exa dash long or something like that or you know you could also just replace the ls command with the exa program if you really really wanted to so you know now we're going to run lss Oh, sorry, we have to reload Zish first, but now we run LSS and our list command is basically replaced with the X uh, coloring. So that's nice. One of the thing you can also do is you can have it display icon. Um, the way we could do that is if we go back into my config.zish.zishrc, we have to add a flag here. So we'll add dash dash icons. And now if we go ahead, run Zish again, we're in our home folder, we run LSS. And now we've got icons to say, hey, these are all folders. This is just a file. If I go into my docs and back into my website directory where I have my images stored, I imagine that's really gonna come in handy here because I can see immediately, oh, that's a video. Oh, that's an image. Oh, that's a directory. It's much more obvious uh, what these types of files are. The way that these work are with the nerd fonts icons. If you're not familiar with those, you really should be. They're freaking amazing. Uh, you can go to the nerd fonts website and download them, but also they're available in most of the package managers that I use are certainly available on Arch Linux, and I believe they're also available to download pretty easily in Ubuntu and stuff like that. Uh, and the way that that works is just if I go into my config for Alacrity, the terminal font that I use is a nerd font which is easy to do because a lot of the popular sort of mono space uh, terminal fonts, source code, pro, fira code, all that kind of stuff has a nerd font derivative that you can replace. And it's the exact same font. It's just when you 
go into a folder and hey, now I want to run LS here, it's going to be able to print icons. It's pretty handy. Yeah, so I mean, really what this looks like to me to be is just, it's basically just a really good replacement for the LS command, uh, which is sort of the list command. It makes it much more sort of user friendly where I might sometimes reach for a actual proper file manager like Ranger. It seems like this is sort of trying to fill that space where I don't necessarily want to do that as much. Actually, if we come back to this long view page, there's a whole lot of cool stuff you can do in here. Um, you know, for example, let's do X uh, dash L or dash dash long dash dash icons. Uh, and then we'll do dash dash headers or wait, what? Maybe it's header. It'll actually show you what's going on. You don't just have to sort of know that. I'll show you the size. I'll show you the user that made it, the date that's modified, all that stuff, which all this info is here. It's kind of nice to have the headers. Uh, you can also use this grid option to sort of make a stack of two if you have the screen real estate for it. So it's taking up less physical space on your screen, but you're seeing just as much data. That's really nice. Um, I don't really know how much more there is to say for this video, because it seems like most of it's just going to be like, hey, if you're interested, come to this website, check out the options you can do with it and, you know, set up a couple of aliases. Um, it also will display Git info. Um, so, you know, let's say let's go into uh, my CD, my documents folder into my dot files and uh, let's make a new file. Let's say we'll create a new file. We'll call it test. Right. And now if I do X dash long dash icons dash Git. What you can see is it's actually putting this little in flag here to tell me that this is a new file. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, if I were to go into my config polybar um, and run that same command again, for some reason it thinks I and I files are Windows files. I think actually that might be a subdirectory that Windows uses a lot. Actually, this is cool. I wasn't expecting it to pull up the like Python logo for Python scripts and stuff like that. That's that's really, really cool. Uh, and it's displaying a, you know, a bash icon for shell scripts. That's pretty cool. I didn't think it was going to get that sort of into the weeds. Oh, and even a config file it has the little gear icon on it. That's cool. But um, oh, right. What I was trying to do is let's uh, let's go into my uh, into some file here. Let's go into a shell script and let's uh, make it a little change to it. We'll say, in, in a comment, we'll say changed it, right? Now if I exit and I run XL long icons get again, what you can see is it's gonna add this M flag here because this file is modified. And so it does have some Git integration as well. That's pretty cool. This is a cool app, but uh, now that I'm pretty far into the video, it seems like uh, <laughs> The best way to learn about this would be to just go to the website and check it out. Uh, so I'll uh, obviously link it in the description. Uh, let me know what you think of it, I guess. I don't know. Uh, come back tomorrow for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.